All right, hi everybody. We're working through the diploma prep material here. This is a chapter on trigonometry. What I got to do is I got to solve this equation uh, in the specific domain that they've given me and then give a general solution for it. Now this one here has got a fairly serious problem with it because I've got three different trig functions here that can't really be separated for each other, from each other by factoring. I, I can't work with this. Something's got to go. Uh, the previous method that I used was to, was to say, okay, well, I don't know what, what theta is, so I'm going to just replace like the, the trig function with an x. But that doesn't work here now because I've got three different trig functions. So I'd have to replace this with x, this with y, this with z. And, and then I'm just stuck with an equation that's got too many variables in it. So I got to think a little bit, I got to be a little bit more clever with this and think back to my definitions and realize, hey, tangent is sine of theta over the cosine of theta. And that was being multiplied by the cosine of theta plus one equals the sine of theta. So what that means is those two cosine terms can divide out. Okay, cos over cos is one. Now that's so long as cosine doesn't equal zero, uh, but we'll, we'll double check our, our result here at the end. So this gives us three sine theta plus one equals the sine of theta. And you know what? I'm gonna bring this sine theta over to the left-hand side, maybe push the one over. So that'll leave me with two sine theta equals negative one, or the sine of theta is equal to negative one half. Okay, good. Now what I gotta do is take a look at the specific domain. Now that I've got uh, a single trig function here, I gotta look at the, the specific domain that I'm solving this over, and it's negative pi to two pi. Okay, okay, so what that is, okay, is this negative half rotation, and then a positive full rotation. Sine is negative in quadrants three and four, so I can tell right now I'm gonna get four angles in my specific domain. So I'm going to find my reference angle by taking the inverse sine of positive one half. Okay, again, the negative has told me what quadrants I was in. I don't, I don't need to do any more with that negative. And the inverse sine of positive one half is going to get me pi over six. Okay, so my angles. Well, first I'm going to follow that negative rotation. So starting here on the positive x-axis, if I rotate down into uh, the, the first quadrant that I get to, which is quadrant four, remember the reference angle is the smallest angle between the, the x-axis and the terminal arm, so that's gotta be negative pi over six. And when I keep rotating into the, the third quadrant here, again, the reference angle is that angle between the terminal arm and the x-axis, so if this is pi over six, okay, if this is one pi over six, that means I must have rotated through five because to get to the other side of the x-axis here, that would have to be six pi over sixes. That's, that's what that means. I'm dividing pi into sixes. So I'd have to go over five of them to get out to here. Then I switch my focus and I look at the positive rotation. So the positive rotation starts here and goes, it goes halfway around to here, which is six pi over sixes. That's a full pi, plus one more. So seven pi over six to get me into the third quadrant. And then to get into the fourth quadrant, I'm, that's almost a complete rotation. I'm just short one. Well, in the full circle, there will be 12 pi over sixes. So in quadrant four, my, if you take my reference angle away from that, that's gotta be 11 pi over sixes. Okay, now the general solution, because that's the specific solution. Now what I'm gonna do is I need to come up with uh, a, t a term, sorry, a, a general expression here that utilizes this, this arm and this arm right here. And I'm probably going to use the positive terms that I found because I would consider those the principal angles, the smallest positive ones. So 7 pi over 6 will represent that arm. 11 pi over 6 will represent this arm right here. And to make this a general solution, I, what I will do is add to this n 2 pi where n is an element of the integers. We use z to represent the integers. I know sometimes we use an, an i, but more often than not, it's actually a z. And that's, that's good enough. Okay, and I want to use 2 pi, I want to use full rotations because these, these two lines here are not opposite each other. They're, they're kind of in uh, adjacent, um, adjacent quadrants. So I, there's no real shortcut I can take here. That is the best I can do.